half a century ago, Jaguar built 12 extraordinary race cars. Here's it. Known as the lightweight E-types, today these cars change hands for up to £5 million. Pounds. You're buying an entry into some fantastic events all over the world. You know, it's a lifestyle. Now Jaguar is delving back into its past to build six brand new lightweights. Ha <laughs> ha look at this. Solely for the super rich. Every six minutes is a photo taken. They're going to put a book and a film together. Handmade to the very highest standards. If it isn't perfection, we shouldn't be considering it. If they prang now and had to repaint... About 40 grand, I should think. How much? And if that's not enough... We're planning six bespoke watches. We'll have a part of the car and melt it down and put it inside. This is our luxury suitcase for the customer. Sorry, I love the smell of it. But even a spare million isn't enough to buy this car. You have to be chosen. I don't want to categorise them as millionaires or billionaires. This is almost like a Van Gogh or a Picasso. Jaguar is one of Britain's most well-loved brands with a history of designing motoring icons. This year, it's risking its reputation on the most expensive car it has ever made. Its origins go back to that 1960s icon, the E-Type. Renowned for its beautiful shape and top speed of 150 miles an hour, it was the epitome of celebrity cool. A new thoroughbred, descended from a long line of champions, it sets the pace for tomorrow. In 1963, Jaguar took the E-Type blueprint and created 12 racing versions, the lightweights. Made of aluminium, they were lighter and faster. They won 21 major races. Now, Jaguar is planning the most ambitious project it's ever undertaken and building an exclusive new run of lightweights. I'm an engineering fanatic with a particular passion for all things E-Type, having restored one 10 years ago. I've been granted exclusive access to witness history in the making. E-types for me are the sexiest, the most beautiful, the most iconic cars ever built. Hello, Martin. Yes, Martin. Hello, Martin. Martin. Hi. Hi, Mark Evans. Hello, Mark, how are you? Yeah, really I've come to meet Martin Hollingsworth and Kevin Riches, the two men in charge of the build. Jaguar in the early 60s, 63, um, took out 18 chassis numbers to build competition lightweight aluminium racing Jaguar E-types and uh, for some reason they only built 12 and six remain unfulfilled. This is the original 60s chassis ledger so 1 to 12 and then here are the chassis numbers that were not assigned. So completely blank? Yeah, the numbers that we're going to use to complete these builds. We've never done this before. How much are you going to charge for these? They will be expensive cars. Yes. <laughs> It's not going to be anything like the cost of the cars that we built today. Probably somewhere around a million pounds. When it comes to building bespoke cars for the super rich, Jaguar are in new territory. Their bread and butter is mass producing cars for the luxury market. We are producing about 80,000 units a year. What you're seeing here is a robot doing all the handling process, makes it very repeatable, very accurate, millimetre perfect. I've been here since I left school, and I'm second generation. My father was here before me in the early 60s, when it was all done by hand, and a very, very labour-intensive operation. Half a century ago, hand-building cars was the norm. Kev's dad was one of many whose skills helped shape Jaguar's reputation. Today, in a corner of Jaguar's plant, Kev's carefully selected team are turning the clock back 50 years. Jaguar have set themselves exacting standards for a handmade car. It must be millimetre perfect. 
There's a gap behind here. It's supposed to be nice and flat for the flush across there. It's a knock-on effect. When you come fit the door, the door might be out. Scratch your head moment. I think that's too long for starters. Because they're handmade, you've got to put them right. It's not like machine parts where everything the tolerance is perfect. You know, it'd be no fun if it all fitted. <laughs> Jaguar want their six chosen buyers to know exactly the painstaking lengths they're going to. Morning, chaps. What's this going on up here? Oh, yeah, we're filmed all throughout the day. They're going to put a book and a film together for each owner. Do you know who the owners are? We haven't been told. You are building these cars and no one has told you. It's all a big secret. So why is that riveted and not spot welded? Because on the car, original car, it was riveted. So we're actually copying the car to all of its originality. Riveting a whole car on the production line takes five hours. Doing it by hand will take two months. I mean, I just can't imagine the pressure. We just get, get told that the customer's waiting for their car and we've given blood. The world into which these lightweights are destined is the exclusive classic car market. Hi there, is Ben available? When it comes to selling extraordinary cars to the super wealthy, Gregor Fiskin is an old hand. I'm top form, top form. Spring is in there, so we're all raring to go at the moment. And yourself? My job is to make sure that those that we introduce to classic cars not only get the right classic cars, but they find the events, have camaraderie when they're on, on rallies. It's a little bit like a, you know, a concierge, really. Someone who shows you the door to a good time. And uh, that's not a bad gift to give. These aren't just cars. They're a passport to an elite lifestyle. You're buying the history, you're buying rarity, and you're buying an entry into some fantastic events all over the world, doing rallies, and the rarer the car, the more likely you are to be invited, and obviously the rarer the car, the more expensive they tend to be. You know, it's a lifestyle. Membership of this club doesn't come cheap. This here is a Becquet de Large from 1921. We have an asking price of one and a half million pounds. Ferrari, we agreed a deal a couple of weeks ago on four and a half million dollars. For this, we, we have an asking price of £2.2 .2 million. But more expensive than all the other cars worth just under £5 million is a 1960s Jaguar lightweight. This is the fourth of the 12 factory lightweights. This is one of the most original. But all the original trim, all the original leather. Smell that. That's, Fantastic. That's the smell of an old car. <laughs> 1960s. You know, what an ultimate weapon in its day. And this car had a stellar competition history. It was raced by Roy Salvadori, who was uh, a Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button type guy of, of, of his level. Music. Absolutely lovely. It won't race again. I don't think it's too valuable. You know, it's a very small club if you want ownership and membership, and uh, they don't come up often. Jaguar hopes the six new lightweights will be as highly regarded as the original 12. It's project manager Kev's job to make sure every part is flawless, even those under the bonnet. Got some fixings. Ah. Bit of an imperfection on that. Oh dear, mate. There's a tiny chip on the top of the engine frame. It's not very good, is it? No. We want the paint to be really as good as possible. Not happy with that. We need to get that repaired. I doubt whether the owner will see it, but I know it's there and we need to get the quality up. So how's your day been? All right, actually. <clears throat> well, the customer's waiting for you. He can't wait. You know. But he can't. At home. Kev's wife, Sue, has to live with his car obsession. Kev is cars, and without cars, he wouldn't be Kev. As you can see, we don't have ornaments like normal people. 
This one in particular, he, he gets really cross because I keep breaking the wheel off. He says, please don't dust my cars. And I say, well, dust some yourself then. And he sits looking at his cars, drinking his beer out of a mug with a Jaguar handle. <laughs> Kev bought diary type. We'd been married about a year, hadn't we? Yeah. And we were so skint at the time, we couldn't afford bedroom curtains. And he told me that this E-Type was immaculate. And when he bought it home, it was far from immaculate. Yeah, so I put all the new panels on, did the body prep, painted it. This is all the original leather seats. They've never been repaired or anything. And it's lovely just to take it for a trundle up the road. It's been a, a great springboard to actually understand the authenticity of the uh, lightweights that we've been working on, because, you know, I can look at my car for reference. So, yeah, so it's, it's been fantastic. Authenticity will be the key to pleasing Jaguar's demanding clients. Many of the outer panels are hand-rolled by traditional craftsmen. Have you now received your order? But one is so big, it needs to be pressed by machine. W will that include the bonnet upper pressing? Kev has located the only original 1960s E-type bonnet press in Newcastle. The tools have not been used for this sort of activity for a long, long time, and uh, I'm very nervous about this. When Kev arrives, his worst fears are realised. Where did the tool split them, Dave? Oh, God, yeah. The old tool is cracked. I'll say it as well. Yeah, I had to put a big tie rod in to bolt the tool together. Is it going to work then, Dave? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes? I like it. Good. Yeah. I've had many sleepless nights over this. Customers oh, have all got delivery dates for these cars. If it doesn't work, you can't meet those commitment dates. And the Jaguar Land Rover, we, don't, we really, really don't want to go there. You've got to close your eyes at this moment. OK. got a split on the corner there. The fate of Jaguar's new lightweight E-Type project hangs in the balance. The first bonnet has been pressed, but the aluminium has split. Can we go and have a look at it? There it is. Again, the trim line on the... On the headlamp is, is about this area. Yeah. And it gets trimmed on the here and across from the nose. It's a good panel, to be honest. Yeah. Fortunately, the splits are in the metal that will eventually be removed. Can I breathe again, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Overall profile looks great. It really does look good. The excess metal is precision trimmed with a laser. But Kev thinks he'll need at least three bonnets per car. These are race cars. And the first thing that happens with a race car, if you come off the track, chances are you're gonna get the bonnet. So we need to make sure we've got a supply of bonnets for the customers of these cars. Successful deal so far. Yes, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Every part of these new lightweights must be authentic, including the interior upholstery. I've come to meet one of Jaguar's last remaining leather cutters, who's recreating the original leather seats. How are you? Hey, I'm Mark. How are you? Today? Yeah, really, okay. really. I'm really, really good. This is it. Finished. This is the lightweight seat. So did you have actual plans to work from? We did some internet search to find out what the seats were like. And then we you're, back, you're back kidding. Up. You oh, yeah. actually like Googled it. Yeah, I went on Google. That's really See what they do. Just love the idea of you sitting there at home over your breath Googling. Oh yeah. Kind of, what the hell did these seats look like in these lightweights? It is beautiful. Mark's upholstery department is a shadow of its former self. Back in the 1960s, Jaguar employed dozens of staff to make seats and leather trim. All leather covered parts are prepared in the trim shop, employing a very high proportion of craftsmen. Approximately three complete hides go into every car. They are matched for colour and grain, and any blemishes or scars are avoided. 
So all these templates are all for one seat? Yes. There are millions of them. The first thing a leather cutter would do, basically, is you draw a line down the backbone of the cow and you work either side of the backbone. Because usually, off there, you've got neck grain, which is poor, but the better grain comes down as you come down the hide. Because of the price of the car, we're really being hypercritical on any leather we've got. It's got to be perfect leather. The trim department is being true to every period detail. What's inside there? Paper. Is that exactly what would have been in there in, yes. in 1963? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Putting the two panels together with piping in between, that's where the skill comes in, you know, like, like that. That is really lovely. This is a current production seat. The seat's probably working a 16-way operation, up, down, bounce of forth and everything. Try and pick that up. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Motors, screw yeah. gears... Yeah. Well, I mean, in time-wise, on a production line, putting a complete seat together would take how long? 20 minutes. How long does it take to propulse to the complete one? Three days. That's what we're working on at the present time with that seat. Do you feel quite a lot of pressure? Yes, you do feel some pressure, because, obviously, what the customer's paying for this, the attention to the details got to be paramount. With only one lightweight seat made, Mark hopes it'll pass its inspection by Kevin Martin. That's beautiful. Screw heads, 90 degrees, lovely. Yeah. It's like Christmas. It's more exciting than Christmas. <laughs> Look at that. As well as the seats, there are leather-clad door panels. There's a scratch on the leather there. I won't rest easily in the knowledge that I've got a little blemish on it. You probably won't see that when it's in the car, but the fact that it's here on this occasion, we'll go back to the trimmers and have this card re-leathered at, at the cost of the car. This is, a, yeah. this is something that, if it isn't perfection, we shouldn't be considering it. While Jaguar strive to produce a flawless new lightweight, one of the originals has recently been restored from a mangled wreck. When you come out, you don't sort of polish it first, then. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> it's a resin car. Jaguar collector Peter Newmark has spent four years rebuilding the car after it crashed in 1964. There was only one straight panel in the whole car. All the aluminium was flattened and they reshaped it. People were killed when it crashed. I'd prefer it wasn't there, but, but, but it wasn't the car's fault. I, that's the way I rationalise it. It wasn't the car's fault. And it's an important part of Jacob's history. Peter's lightweight was last valued at £5 million. Today, he's taking it back on the racetrack for the first time in 50 years. But it's fragile. Because the metal is that old and it's been reworked, if it was damaged in any way, then we would lose, we'd lose this metal, and uh, we can't do that. Hence, we just play with it. We're not going to race it. It does sound bloody good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Don't the hairs on the back of your neck stand up? Ridiculous, but it is the first time I've been out on the track, and uh, she was great. I don't normally think about history when I'm driving a car, but actually, I did go around there. A racing history is something Jaguar can't build into the new lightweights. So, at Jaguar HQ, the special operations team are racking their brains for ways to give their six new lightweights their own prestige. You know, Jaguar's got a huge amount of history, you know, really some history that other car brands would absolutely die for. And, and we got to nurture that and bring that to the forefront. Each of the new lightweights has a unique vehicle identification number that was reserved for the cars, which were never built in the 60s. The team wants to give each of them its own presentation case. Ahead of their car arriving, uh, we're going to have an aluminium model painted in uh, the colour of their choice and a base trimmed in their leather. These, these, these are going to be fixed in, I take it? 
Yeah, it'd be all fixed yeah. in, but, but we still have to have the movement above so when we can lift off right. another. Okay. So then, obviously, this is the bin plate. Yeah, obviously, the customer can come in at the end and pop with it on. Okay. Is there going to be any instructions? Yeah, we'll have to produce a sort, a sort of document. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's going to be quite difficult to take out, so I think we probably might want to make that recess slightly deeper. Okay. So that when someone comes in, they can get their finger in and pick it off nicely. Having a little recess in here with the four rivets is so special. David and Charlie have come up with more than one way to give their super rich clients that exclusive touch. What we're planning is to produce six bespoke watches. It'll have a part of the car be melted down and put inside the watch. The movement inside the watch is designed like an E-type steering wheel. It's just another little piece to make that story that just extra little bit special. At a traditional English watchmaker's, it's the moment of truth. Come on in, let me show you the, the watches and the watch box. So, right, OK, it's the final watch. Superb. Sometimes you don't want to give it to them, you work so hard on it. So. What car? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then you haven't seen this, the box. And obviously the watch sits in there. I'm absolutely thrilled with this case. It's the you whole package, thinking, isn't yeah. it? I'm absolutely bowled over with this. It's just it's, it's quite so it's, it's quite touchy, isn't it, mm. really? And which is a watch is all about. And I think um, well, it's that whole sort of it's the anticipation of yeah. that as well of clicking it in. What, what's in it? And so, it looks so pretty. Man. With so much effort being poured into every little detail of this project, I want to know what the business angle is. John. Nice to meet you. Mark, nice right. to meet you. John Edwards is a director at Jaguar. As the man who released the cash for the lightweight project, he's risking the company's global reputation and millions of pounds on its success. How will you measure the success of this project in purely business terms? This is about reminding the world that we have a great heritage, that we're interested in that heritage. It's about introducing ourselves to some customers. We're selling them a different level of product here. We would like to create a relationship with these customers and do business with these customers, help them indulge in their passion for, for our cars. You want a bit of the super rich? We want to help them indulge in their passion. Jump to loosen these off. In the workshop, I'm wondering how the build team are handling the pressure. Morning, guys. Kevin Martin have just been given some unexpected news. What we've got happening today, we're going to have the first customer, not the customer of this car, but the first customer along to see this car. One of the lucky six who's yes. actually put money yeah. down to buy the car, so there's a lot of pressure on us. We are nervous. But we feel that the car, Martin and I feel that the car is fantastic. These are yeah, people yeah. who don't suffer fools. The quality to them is correct. everything. But he's not seen, he's not seen the, the car, car at this stage. No. If he walks in here and just goes, no, it's not what I expected, Who's, whose head is on the block? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a good question. I mean, I mean the, the, to, to be honest, if it's as bad as that, then the credibility of the whole project, I think, is, is at stake. Because whoever, whoever might say, this isn't what I think thought I was getting, would suggest that we've either missold it or we're not creating what we think we should be creating. They'll soon find out, because he's only two hours away. Obviously, I'm spending a lot of money for the car, and it'll be very, very good to see exactly what's going on. And the clearances around there. Clearances around there. It's a big day for Jaguar. Multi millionaire John Breslow, one of the clients they're hoping will buy a new lightweight, is making a flying visit to England to check on progress. Uh, I owned a welding supply business in the Midwest, and I felt really bad about selling a family business. So I decided I wanted a kind of a bonus to make me feel good. So I have you know, maybe 30, 35 cars, I, I, you know, I don't know the exact amount. He'll be met by Tony Schult, Jaguar's broker, who wants to keep the sale of the car on track. What's this guy like? I mean, hopefully I'll get to meet him. He's a car collector. He's an enthusiastic car collector. He drives them. He doesn't leave them at home in the garage. There is so much interest and so many people want it that we want to choose the right owners. People are going to love and care and cherish the cars and use them.
he's going to be here in in five minutes. They must feel inside hugely pressured. Because if, if an owner walks in here and says, I don't want it anymore, all of these guys will lose their job. This is Martin Hollingsworth. Hi, how are so, you? John Breslow. Martin's one nice of the guys in you. charge of the build here. This is, this is the body construction. And now the guys have got to start trimming it and putting all the final assembly together. We even been talking about painting the interior. We said, no, let's leave it at the minute. Originally, originally would it, were they like well, this? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they were. Originally, yeah. they were polished yeah. aluminum. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Are these halls stained? They will have bungs on. Uh -huh. So they will be rock grommeted in there. I think that's what they do. Because I plan on driving it. Yeah, I plan on driving it. Yeah, yeah. It does look like, like an airplane. It does, yes. Yeah. It, it, it's perfect, yeah. It's an engineer. It's, it's got most of it dying, so, yeah. so even if it isn't a complete uh, engineer, it's kind of, like I like the engineering. Yeah. Was that the way it was in the original? In this area here, we set up a body construction area just for the light. Just make, you sh make sure you do number four the best. That's mine. John, can I just grab you before Absolute, you go? Absolutely. How has today been for you? Fantastic. When you're a kid, you never really realize that the dreams are going to come true. And this is a dream that's come true. Too many people buy things that are put away like Van Gogh's. And this is almost like a Van Gogh or a Picasso. And people ought to be able to see it. And I'll take it to shows and I'll race it. Goodwood, the UK's mecca of historic racing. Every classic race car owner dreams of being invited to compete here. The members meeting is one of the most exclusive dates in the British classic car calendar. I've come to find out what the elite think of Jaguar's new lightweights. The first person I want to speak to is Sean Lynn. He owns one of the original 12 lightweights. So you have lightweight E-type race car number one. Yeah, I do. That is amazing. Tell me a bit about that story. It's such a massive, long history of what this, this car became. It raced all the way through its life. Graham Hill, Roy Salvadori, Jackie Stewart, they all raced it. So the heritage thing is really, really yeah, key. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's why, you know, the, the cars mean so much to you. What they did in, back in period and, and how they raced, how they changed, how they evolved. So what do you think about Jaguar's announcement to build six more lightweights? Uh, from a historical perspective, I think it's wrong. I, I think that you're, you're sullying, to an extent, the original race history that Jaguar had. Uh, with the original lightweights and why they were so special. How would it compete with, with your car if it was put on this track It'd together? It'd be quicker. Not made of 1960s, it's made of 2015 materials. And the copy car's worth a lot less. And if you're going wheel to wheel with somebody, he's risking a lot less than you are. So you'll back off. The first of the new lightweights has already been approved to race by Motorsport's governing body. Good march. Hi. But I want to hear what the man running this meeting thinks of them. The last six cars to be built by Jaguar. Would they get an invite to Goodwood, potentially? No. No, because we don't have replica cars racing at Goodwood. Much of course we can, we'll run the absolute real car. And if we have to get that for America or China, wherever it is, we'll get it. There's no getting away from the fact it, isn't, it is a new car. The chassis is brand new, it hasn't won a race before, and a lot of these uh, great lightweights here. They raced the Goodwood in period. They have a fantastic history, and now they're racing here again. He used the word replica, and the fact that he said very clearly he would not let one on his racetrack. That's interesting. If you're one of the six lucky people who is spending one and a half million pounds on these cars, wouldn't you kind of expect you might get an invitation? The build team has spent four months crafting the first lightweight. Now perfectionist Kev must hand it over to the paint facility. Under the bonnet, 
that's painted to this seal edge here. We don't want the inside of the car marking or scratching, so we need to make sure we articulate all that across to the team here. On it, painted down to the edge here. It's like letting go of your baby, you know. It's always a worry. In advance of its paint job, the team spend over two weeks filling and sanding every imperfection in the outer metal. The lightweight preparation and paint takes 850 man hours, as opposed to just 10 on the production line. After four times more layers of base coat and primer than a normal car, the lightweight is almost ready for its final colour. We get rid of all the salty hand marks. We are being a little bit overcautious. Never know, might, might, might get to have a go in it one day. Nearest I get to have a go in one is when I've been pushed in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Staring out the workshop. Yeah. It's not a bad colour, look. To mix this up, there's probably over 12 of these different tinters to make that one colour. The colour the client has chosen is gunmetal grey, a shade Jaguar has reproduced from the original 60s palette. Oh, a couple of astronauts. Hey? <laughs> feel like Armageddon. Going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> In total, nine layers of paint and lacquer are applied. Privilege to work on something like this. It's going to be someone's pride and joy, isn't it, wouldn't it? The car isn't the only thing being painted. In the room next door, panels that will eventually become an accompanying luxury suitcase are receiving similar treatment. It's the first time I've ever painted a suitcase before. Is, is it stitched? Upstairs yeah. in the offices, the special operations team are pondering the suitcase's finer details. Thinking this is what we put in each of the uh, six cases. Sort it's of like, it's like, like, the, like the colour against the, yeah. the sort of cream and the, it's quite neutral. So We've had this idea to different. produce a suitcase for the lightweight customers based on the fact that to qualify for 1964 GT racing, you had to be able to prove that you could carry in your car a suitcase. Um, it's quite a quirky rule, but we thought it was once worth celebrating. After weeks of back and forth, David and Charlie are en route to the Queen's own suitcase maker to inspect the first case. It's a big moment for Charlie. I'm nervous in the sense that uh, I know in Dave's eyes this element of the project's got my, um, it's got my name firmly attached to it. If he gets it wrong, uh, then I'll be going back home on my own. <laughs> pressure. This gentleman here is Joe, who is our factory manager. How are you? Nice to meet you. Can I let you, you open no, it? No, no, you, you, you do the honours. You've been working on this. This is really something else. It's just another element of why this car is different. I just love that. Everybody's going to be looking at you when you turn up in the car. I think we need to think about whether we put anything in it. It's quite a nice opening and just having the full impact of the print. But it's even a nicer choice if you, if you lift it up and they had in their size their racing garment or... Yeah. Maybe even a nice set of gloves. But again, it's that constant, oh my god, every time I'm surprised by the time I open yeah. the door or I open a bootcase. I hear you guys have been thinking of, of wallpaper for some time as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why wouldn't you, though? It's great. I know. Sorry, I love the smell of it as well. Mm -hmm. Happy. Very happy. Excited. To keep a job. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting really excited now for the, the customer to see this. And actually, I, I think there's going to be a few people fighting around who's going to actually show the customer all these things. It's always better giving rather than receiving. Back at Jaguar, the marathon three-week paint process is nearly finished. I've come to see the results. Morning, chaps. That looks amazing. With a red leather interior, perfect. Be nice. If they prang this car and had to repaint, that would be an expensive I job. Should, I would, yeah, about, I should say so, yeah. About 40 grand, I should think. Yeah. How much? Well, 40 you, grand? Yeah, I bet you wouldn't get a lot of change out of 40 grand, yeah. 
Whereas if you were just painting in the stuff the cars were originally painted, the cellulase that would oh, be painted, oh, yeah. that's going to cost you what? About Ten quid a litre, I think. Yeah. I mean, that tells you a lot about these cars, doesn't it? Yeah. While the boys finish polishing, I can't help but sneak a peek at the car. Looks amazing. Beautiful piece you, of art. You must. It, it is a piece of art. You must be incredibly proud of that paint job. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. It's almost like liquid metal. The contrast with the kind of rawness of the aluminium yeah. just works, doesn't it? Yeah. A week later, and it's all hands on deck to get the place looking presentable. Never, like a little Duracell man, with his machine and his broom, and he just never stops. We've got the uh, customer of car one coming through on Monday. So it's got to be nice and nice and clean and tidy. Sorry. With the first Sorry. buyer coming to see his very own finished car, it's a race to get it ready. The eight post finishes are going to be on, aren't they? The eight post finishes we've got over here. No, no, in aluminium. They're not painted. Why aren't they painted? Because they need fitting. They don't okay. Be to the car. Before they're painted. Before they're painted. Yeah. I need to. I need to understand no, what what, 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 what it isn't going to have because. And this is the point where probably anxiety is at its highest. The fear of scratching it or putting a screw on and the screwdriver slips and, you know, we've all done that. Um, so it's, uh, it's difficult. It's a difficult time for us. In two days' time, the man Jaguar has chosen to buy the first million-pound E-Type lightweight is coming to inspect the finished car. But it's far from ready. We have to have the quality. That's... That's paramount. To get it to a point where the customer can come in and see a complete car, we can't fail on that. We've got to have the car on its wheels, sitting there, looking all pretty. We need to get the, the gaps even all the way around so that each of the sides match. Near on perfect as possible. I want the perfect, actually. So that's 10mm, but that gap's going to be 9mm. 6mm mil. Mil that size. It's like a Chinese puzzle. Yeah. But maybe it moved forward again. Might have been. So let's, uh, let's have a look at taking that back a minute then. So run it over some rollers to, to lift the frame up slightly there. I might do that, might it? Might do. Might do. The team is meticulous for good reason. The wealthy client has so far only left a deposit for the car. This visit will decide if he actually wants to buy it. Where we are on the day, he'll look at it when it's on the ramp. Yep. And he'll say, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, or if you think I'm paying 1.2 million for this, you are kidding. And then hopefully he will then will sign his contract. And then the other thing is, um, we just need an area where you can put some, uh, some pastries and a cup of coffee. There probably won't be any space for pastries, so we just put an extra table How big are the pastries? <laughs> the big ones, Martin. <laughs> Good, well done, well done, yeah. team. This is so It'll exciting. Be okay. <laughs> Despite the pressure, Chief Engineer Martin finds time to appreciate the little details. That's the, uh, that's the gator for the gear shifter. We just had this made up and just look at it. It's just beautiful. And it smells beautiful. <laughs> you probably think I'm a bit sad, really, but this, I love things like this. It almost moves from a piece of mechanical equipment to a automotive art. It's the most gorgeous car in the world made to the highest standard, it's just fabulous. Quite emotional, actually. <laughs> the day of reckoning has come at Jaguar. It's the first time one of the super-rich clients will see the finished million-pound car he has reserved. Uh, he's due to arrive in 20 minutes, so... Um, exciting times. Our expectation is that he'll be pleased with it, but you never know on the day. <laughs> this, is, this is our opportunity to show how good the quality is and effectively what he's going to get for his money. What's your call today? Because I think that's... Yeah. Yeah. The issue we have is the bonnet latch need to just get that latch down so that it's locking properly. It's not doing that at the moment, so... So 
Hard to see what's going on when the bullet's shut. It's not even engaging in the pin. No. That one's oh, shoving no, inboard. That's it. Well done, Simon. Slowly, I think. That sounds dreadful. That's serious rubbish. Right, can we uh, can we start cleaning this area out? Catering expert, perfect. I keep polishing, don't stop. It's the culmination of six months' painstaking work to hand-build this iconic car from scratch. Now, Jaguar's first super-rich client is arriving to give his verdict. Yeah, junior security, your uh, VLP visitor's arrived. The customer is a very private man. Uh, I think that uh, we owe it to him to be as, uh, as discreet as possible, so we're going to have the handover in a, in a private session, really. Anyway, I must ask if you could go. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Thanks. The inspection lasts for more than an hour. Very pleased. Uh, I think... Uh, I, I don't think... He loved the car. Um, it was... It was 98% complete, so we've got a bit more to do. The words he said were, they were never like this in 63. That's what I've seen. When you get that, it's like, great, this feels great, it's really good. And it makes it all worthwhile, you know, and you can see. He actually meant it as well, which is, which is fantastic. e type. <laughs> the first client has decided to go through with the purchase. But I wonder how he feels about the fact that some of the historic car world are turning their noses up. After my discovery at Goodwood, I've asked to meet up with Tony Shulp, Jaguar's broker who's selling the cars. If I paid one and a half million quid for a car and I couldn't get into those races, I might think I'd be missold. How do you think the owners will feel about the fact that they maybe can't get the car into Goodwood? The cars are by many of the race circuits, cars are by invitation anyway. And I think Goodwood's not the only race circuit in the world by any means. And uh, the, the car will be able to compete in many, many places. You will see very few of the original cars racing because they're too expensive to race. The risk of damage is too high. There is a bit of kind of sniffy attitude to replicas. There is, but this is not a replica. It's that kind of elitism that sometimes happens. This is a classic Jaguar. There's no question of that. But the car won't be racing on any track until it's gone round this one. At Jaguar's testing facility, Kev is going to put this million-pound machine through its paces for the first time. It's exciting, but its uh, nerves are running, uh, they're running over time at the moment. There will be some issues with the car, I'm sure. You never get a car like this to run right first time. But I'm just hoping that the issues that we have are only small. Kev, how you doing? Six how months doing? after the build began, I've come to get my first glimpse of the finished car. It looks absolutely incredible. You can see why people are lusting after this car. We can get some protective tape around the edges. Yeah. And along the sills. Is that um, just to stop them to protect from the stone yes, chips or, wh the or whatever? Protect stone chips. Is it going to run okay? You never know with, a, with this sort of car. It's not like a conventional road car that we all drive these days. This is a race car. Ready? Go, go. Do I put it in gear? Right? Ready? Yeah.
with its race-tuned engine now fired up and purring, it's time for Kev to ease the lightweight into its first run. Okay. Right, Kev, good luck. Don't break it! We'll try. Now as it goes past, that that car is crying out to be floored. The big cat is. Kev, how'd he go? It's epic as you as you start pushing it a wee bit, you know. It's lovely, it really is. So how big a relief is it for you personally? Ah, uh, it's colossal. This this was the day that we had to make this work. Guys have done a great job, they really have. But one crucial question remains. Can I have a go? Oh, I don't know whether we can allow that. We can let you go in the, in the passenger seat, if you like. But not drive it? This, this is a sold car. We can't let anybody else drive it, apart from me, I'm afraid. Sorry, Mark. So it's the passenger seat? It's the passenger seat, I'm afraid. Everybody who's been involved in this project should be massively proud. Their names will go down in the record books. It's superb. I love driving it. Makes my job all, all worthwhile. It was probably one of the most fascinating Jaggers ever built. And we only built one.